Harry, congratulations on the Acropolis victory. Thank so you. Thank it you. Three in a row on this one. Well, I take it as an individual rally, but I don't mind if, you know, three in a row comes out. Is it going to be another battle between you and Hanu? Yeah, I would think so, yes, and uh, will be added by some English drivers as well, Malcolm and the rest of the boys. So, Hanu, you must obviously be hoping your luck's going to change on this one. Yes, you know, it has to change sometime, and uh, I have been long enough in, in this business to know that it will change. Some people have been saying possibly you've been trying to do too much this year, you know, all these different drives and the testing and so on. Is that affecting things, do you think? I think so. It, uh, I have been a little bit too busy this year and I have done too much. I know it, you know, because you are losing interest in driving and it's rushing from the place to the next one and you haven't really time to concentrate really to do well anything, you know. And uh, uh, I have noticed it, but uh, I have to change it for next year. What are you going to do about it then? Uh, it, you know, I have a commitment, and uh, so I can't do anything this year. I have to do what I have promised to do. But uh, next year, will I have? I will have just a contract with one manufacturer, and that means that I have a little bit easier time. But all those commitments don't seem to affect Nicola's masterful concentration, and he immediately asserts his and the Ford Escort's authority over the Scottish forests. He's fastest on the opening five special stages, and surprisingly, it's Stig Blomqvist's powerful Saab Turbo that initially leads Mikola's rivals. Vartanen has trouble settling in. Maybe he'd rather be at home with his new baby daughter, born just before the Welsh rally a month ago. It's vital Jimmy McRae gets a good result in dealer team box or Chevette to keep his sedan championship chances alive. There are a trio of Triumph TR V8s out on the Scottish, headed by the determined Briton Tony Pond. Henry Toivonen is as brave as ever, but has already punctured a rear tyre on the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus. Malcolm Wilson, with the experienced Terry Harriman, who used to co-drive for Paddy Hopkirk, is already showing the speed to challenge the two top fins. As competitors head across southern Scotland with a tough night's rallying ahead, Mikola has already opened out a slim lead. Blanquist's Saab rears up as Stig clips a rock. Look at that punctured tyre, just the situation you want to avoid in such a fast front drive rally car. Because of Blomqvist's misfortune, fellow Swede Anders Kulang and his Opel Ascona 400 easily catches the stricken Saab through the six-mile Kirotri stage near Newton Stewart. Brooks has been looking a bit too closely at the splendid Scottish scenery too. Already the front of his Talbot looks a little second-hand. The steering is also damaged and he has to struggle to the end of the stage before his service crew can repair it. There's drama in store for McRae, too, as his gearbox suddenly jams in first gear, and he also has to limp to the end of the stage. Malcolm Wilson is both supremely skillful and a little lucky. He just brushes the rock that punctured Blanca's tyre, and it doesn't affect his time. Fortune and Toivonen don't go together on this event. A spark from the rear, and there's a lot of boiling brake fluid smoking up from the back of the Talbot. Its rear brakes damaged by another puncture, and by the time the rally reaches Edinburgh for the breakfast halt, he's well down the field. At Edinburgh, Mikola leads Vartanen by nearly two minutes. Morning, Harry. Morning, morning. What sort of night have you had? Slow night. What do you mean? Well, you know, driving slowly. You're still second, though. Yes, 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 just about, just about. But they're catching up fast, so I don't know how long we will be second. 
Why uh, have you been driving slowly? It's a holiday time for me, not a rolling time. But it's not been a holiday for Malcolm Wilson, who arrives at Edinburgh having felt every mile of the long, tough night after driving superbly. It's been very hard, I don't know why. It seems a lot harder than the Welsh, and we've just done the same amount. I don't, can't understand it. Maybe it's because it's been a bit wetter, is that it? Uh, I think it's spread out as well. It's, you've been sort of stopping and starting, whereas you kept going all the time on the Welsh. So it's probably that. Have any problems during the night? No, not really. No. Nothing. <laughs> so it's still keep, fairly. Yeah, we we'll keep taking a few seconds off cool and then he keeps taking a few back off us, so it's a nice little battle going, really. After being defeated by Vatanel on the previous championship round, the Welsh, Mikola is in true flying fin form. His talent and David Sutton's superb preparation of the Eton Yale escort form a class of their own in Scotland. Kulang is fighting for every second with Wilson, who's now relegated the Opal to fourth place. Spectacular as ever, Blomqvist hurls the big turbocharged Saab through the 20th Craig Vinian stage in seventh place, but suddenly he comes to an abrupt halt. Meanwhile, Vatanen is now matching Mikola's pace and desperately trying to slash that two-minute deficit. Blomqvist uses the Saab shortwave radio to summon assistance as Vatanen speeds by and time ticks away for the stricken Saab. Blomqvist makes contact with his service crew and tells them what he suspects has happened. Pond is now a secure six in the best of the triumphs. New Zealander Alan Carter is running outside the top ten in his Toyota, which appears to be quite a handful. There's barely time to get it straight before the next stony curve. See, what's happened? I don't know, but I think it's a half shaft broke. Russell Brooks is enjoying a spirited run in the Talbot now, chasing after top British honours. Disregarding Mikola's performance, British drivers are more competitive than ever on this event. <laughs> Blomqvist arranges to collect a new drive shaft from his nearby service crew as Brooks stirs the stones on his way past, and Stig prepares to change the shaft. 